Hey everyone, and welcome to the VitaCast episode 92. I am your host, Tyler Oltoff, and joined beside me, not physically, but across the world, kind of. It's Kyle Wakeling. What's up, Kyle? Not too much, Tyler. What's up with you? Not a whole lot either. Been pretty busy, but <laughs> hey, we're here now. That's true. That's true. What about yourself? Well, I kind of already answered that. Well, answered more in depth, Kyle. More in depth. <laughs> well, for the last couple of hours, I've been fixing the script and dealing with all that shit. So that's been my, you know, recent history. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. That's nice. But we're, we're here to talk about the Vita, so we should do that, right, Kyle? Absolutely. Well, I guess I'll jump into it. Uh, my Vita is backing up to my computer right now, so I can't really look at my trophies. But I think I have a good enough memory to recall a few of the games I've played. And I know I've played some Resident Evil. Um, excuse me. Uh, I also played some Danganronpa, another episode. Uh, I also played a bit of Killzone Mercenary. Some Soul Sacrifice Delta. You and I did a live stream the other night, and that was a lot of fun. You should definitely check out the replay of that going live soon. Um, what else did I play? Now, now I gotta think, think hard. Oh, I, I've been playing some more Virtue's Last Reward because I want to finish that game, and I really think I should play the first one. But I'm really contemplating just watching like a live or not a live stream, uh, just like a YouTube let's play of it, because I really don't care to go buy the game and try to finish it when I've got all these other games to play. So I might try just doing that, but I don't know. I don't know. Anyways. Um, what else did I play? There's probably something. I think I played, uh, what is it called? That Super Time Force Ultra? Yeah, I think I played a little bit of that. That game's hard, but fun. I need to play more of it, but again, just so much stuff to play that it makes it very difficult. Um, what else? There's, there's something. There's something that I'm forgetting about. But anyways, what about you, Kyle? Well, um, I've been playing quite a bit this week, actually. Um, started off the week with some Tetris Ultimate and some Resident Evil Revelations 2. Mostly just kind of screwing around and playing. Not really trophy hunting yet, but I'm definitely going to be doing that on Resident Evil Revelations 2 at the least. Um, also played some Hot Shots Golf. Um, I forget, did we play this week or was that just me? Uh, I know we did play. Maybe that's what I was forgetting. I, I think that, yeah, I think that's what we played this earlier this week. Yeah. Um, so we played some of that. Um, yeah, and then we played stupid ass Minecraft. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, so, yeah. there was that. <laughs> um, if you want to see me rage and play Minecraft the complete wrong way, it's up on the YouTube channel. So check that out. Did I upload it to the Vita Lounge channel? Yes, you did. Okay, I can't remember if I did or not. I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> totally forgot <laughs> about You did, that. I checked. Okay. Um, also played some more Amnesia Memories. Um, that's actually pretty good. Um, I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it after I started. I was a little more sure before I went in, so that kind of fucked me up a little bit. But <laughs> um, when I started, I was like, okay, this kind of seems badly written, but it was just that the character was an asshole, so that, that makes sense. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, um, decent game. Um, I'm not super far through it. I've only done one and a bit of the uh, routes, but it's interesting so far. And uh, I'm going to have to agree with Liam that it's, the, it, it's a pretty good game. <laughs> um, also played some Soul Sacrifice Delta with you. That was pretty fun. Um, but we have to play more of that because you have to catch up so I can get some trophies. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> um, and I also cleaned up, um, some trophies on Dang and Rampa, another episode of Ultra Despair Girls, uh, just mainly going around shooting Monokumas and collecting money because there's lots of shit to do with that. So yeah, that's my week. Not too bad, not too bad. Not too bad at all, I think. Well, all right, let's jump into the reviews this week. we got a couple here. So first up, we've got Back to Bed, which was reviewed by James, and he gave it a 3.2 out of 5, and he says, quote, 
Back to Bed is an audacious take on the puzzle platformer genre, appealing graphics and a clever, albeit mild, story where weren't enough to cover up the lack of truly innovative, no, inventive puzzles. It's not a bad game but by any stretch of the imagination, but its short duration and uneven difficulty doesn't match up with its unique world, end quote. So yeah, I, I didn't play any of this game, so I really don't know too much about it. What about you, Kyle? Me either. I don't know shit. <laughs> well, go check out the review for Back to Bed if you want to know more, because Kyle and I are in the dark when it comes to this one. So <sighs> We were in bed while this was being played. <laughs> <laughs> well, alright, you want to take the next one, Kyle? Alright, so the next one is one that you might have seen if you grabbed our last issue of the Vita Lounge magazine. But now it's up on the site. It's the Mo Chronicle Import Review by Adrian. He gave it a 2.8 out of 5, which isn't a great score, but, you know, if you like the genre, you might like the game. And he says, quote, Mo Chronicle's strong point is its humor, and it's too bad that it's not enough to carry the game. With games such as Demon Gaze and Operation Abyss out right now, you're better off to pick one of those for a pure dungeon RPG experience. End quote. So, yeah, he's recommending other games. That's not a good sign. No. <laughs> but at least you have the option to get other games, right? That's true. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, well, that's all we got for the review, so let's jump into the new releases. Kind of a short week here, so we'll get right into it. For North America, we are getting Rugby World Cup 2015 for thirty nine ninety nine and Fat City for twelve ninety nine. Kyle, what about Europeans? What are they getting? All right, those Europeans are getting Curses and Chaos, which is out on the 11th. It's 14.99 euros, 11.99 pounds, and 22.95 Australian dollars. They also got Dang and Rampa, another episode, Ultra Despair Girls on the store. It was already out physically. And that's 39.99 euros, 34.99 pounds, and 54.95 Australian dollars. And then there's also Gem Legends, which I have not heard of at all. And that's out on the 11th as well. And it's 4.99 euros, 3.99 pounds, and 7.55 Australian dollars. A crazy week, right, Kyle? Yeah, kind of weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, I don't know. Are you gonna? We, get we've had those? crazier the last couple, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you gonna pick up any of these? Well, I already have Dang and Rapa, which is only coming in Europe, so that doesn't really matter. Um, Curses and Chaos, I I don't know. It might be something I pick up cheap. Um, as for the, the North American releases, Rugby World Cup, probably not. Um, and Fat City, definitely not. Um, I looked at it, and the gameplay is just not for me, though it looks like it's all right. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how to play rugby, so I don't want to buy a sports game for something <laughs> I don't know how to play. So makes sense. Plus, it's thirty nine dollars, so that's <laughs> yeah, that is pricey. Not. Yeah, um, Fat City is just <clears throat> eh, not really interested in it, and I've got so much other things to play right now, so it's gonna have to sit there and stay fat for a while. <laughs> so yeah. That's all we've got for the new releases. Let's jump into the news. And <clears throat> first up, a few days ago we brought you the news that the upcoming RPG Tokyo Zendu from Nihon Falcom would feature an array of minigames. We now have further details on these new distractions. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> my voice is hating me today. Hold on. W water break. <clears throat> all right. Up first, though, we have details on a brand new location to explore called Morimiya Memorial Park, a large picturesque park which has a lot of natural beauty as well as a gorgeous lake running through its center. It is the main location for relaxation and, it's, and is located in the western part of Morimiya City. As well as picking up a light snack from the small cafe and crepe to stand, you can also enjoy running track to burn off those calories, most likely gained by the crepe you just devoured. Or you can explore the date spot. The final area of note is the skate park, which leads us to the first minigame, skateboarding. Playing as Ko, you can play a skateboarding minigame which has dedicated courses. This game involves you collecting flags throughout the course within a certain time limit. 
You'll even get a chance to show off your boarding skills as there is a trick area at some point in each course with gimmicks you'll have to perform to finish the course. You may even be treated to premium prizes. Gate of Avalon. This game is based on the Blade minigame that featured in the Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel. It's a Ono Ono on One card game in the Tokyo Xanadu. Uh, Co will battle non-party member city dwellers. You start at level 1, but move up the ranks by defeating other players. There may even be a final surprise when you face your last opponent. Michi Panic with Magical Girl Magical Alyssa. A limited collaboration version of the evil uh, Michi Wacky game, Michi Panic, with the TV anime Magical Girl Magical Al Alyssa. Almost identical to Whack-A-Mole, the aim of the game is to use your Pico Pico Hammer to exterminate the evil Michis who are constantly emerging from holes in the ground. Based on your score, you will earn a bonus rank. Depending on how well you rank will determine the rate of medals you receive. Earning a high score will earn you rare items. Tokyo Xanadu is due out in Japan September 30th. The latest title in the Atelier series, titled Atelier Sophie, The Alchemist of the Mysterious Book, will be arriving on PlayStation Vita in Japan on November 19th, and ahead of the release we have been given details of three new characters as well as a few more pieces of information in regards to the in-game features. Let's start with the new characters. Tess Heitz, Hetz, bleh, Hetzman, a showgirl who is working at a cafe to support her family. She is bright and simple-minded troublemaker. Mechlet, a young boy who appears before Sophie. He seems very interested in alchemy, but his intentions are unknown. He may have a childlike appearance, but he can still sometimes see through to the true nature of things. Atomina, a young girl who is always by Mechlet's side, appear, er, compared to her companion, she is more on the quiet side. She tends to act her age most of the time. Newly revealed features include obtaining vouchers as rewards. Certain items can only be obtained with these vouchers. Its effects are unknown, but the sinister-sounding Dark Ticket is a feature in the game. There will be group requests where you'll be contracted to collect materials and battle monsters in the same area. Rewards for these requests are set higher than normal requests. You can learn all about different items and monsters by eavesdropping on conversation conversations in the cafe. Perhaps the best new piece of information is the fact that you can make Plakta? Plakta? I don't know what that is. Wear only chocolate instead of clothes. That's weird. Atelier Sophie, the alchemist of the mysterious book, is the 17th game, main game in the Atelier series, and as previously stated, releases November 19th. Next up, Killing Bites Fighter has been announced and is in development for PlayStation Vita and PlayStation 4. This news comes from the latest issue of the Japanese magazine Monthly Heroes. Killing Bites is a manga series written by Murata Shinya. It tells the story about a college student named Nomoto Yuya who gets involved with some messed up peers who forcibly kidnap girls. Unfortunately for those gang rapists, the girl they attempted to abduct while with Yuya just happened to be an animal-human hybrid named Hitomi, who has mixed DNA with a honey badger. Okay. <laughs> there are two other known characters, both females, who share genes with a leopard and a salamander. With the countless variety of different animal-human hybrids, this could potentially end up being a very unique fighting game. More details for the new for the new Killing Bites Fighter will be revealed soon, but we do know that it is essentially a brawler type of fighting game. The game is slotted for a spring 2016 release. And sounds quite interesting. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, moving on. Those of you that read everything we post may already be aware of Drive, Drive, Drive via Tyler's PAX Prime write-up, but for those of you who hadn't noticed, we can tell you a little bit more about this upcoming racer from Different Cloth. Studio head Gordon Midwood spoke to the PlayStation blog to talk about their upcoming racer and showed off the teaser trailer, which is available on the site. Described as the only racer to let you move more than one track at a time, Drive 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 is a fusion of arcade racing and track management. You need to manage multiple tracks simultaneously, and although when you switch, the AI will take over for the driving, unfortunately the computer racers are described as less than competent, 
So relying on the AI to win races for you is going to be less than fruitful, which means that you will spend each race hopping from track to track quite frequently. Gordon calls this cretinous driving artificial idiocy and playfully suggests that it is uniquely powered by our intelligent stupidity engine. Gordon says that the game will feature, quote, an amazing soundtrack by the world's state-of-the-art synth prog post-rock band Zombie, end quote, and says that from a visual point of view, the game will have those trippy retro future visuals all the kids are hallucinating over. In addition to funky tunes and looks, Drive, Drive, Drive will be set across different galaxies, multiple gravities, and will also feature a track collector allowing you to create, play, and share your best tracks and challenge your friends in multiplayer. Drive, Drive, Drive is set to release in 2016 and will be published by Choice Provisions. And moving on. Back at Games, Three Force Home Extended Edition is an atmospheric visual novel short story about a family. There is a storm approaching, and in the game you will guide Kelly through the Nebraska countryside in order to get home. As she is driving, Kelly speaks to her parents and brother on the phone, and an intimate story based on mature themes such as adulthood and family breaks through based on dialogue choices that you make. This extended edition of the game adds more story branches to the main narrative and introduces an epilogue, as well as other features that flesh out the characters that star in Three Floors Home. It will be available sometime later this month for you to get your hands on. A few weeks ago, we brought you news that Shovel Knight's free expansion, Plague of Shadows, would be arriving soon for the Vita. Now we have news on what challenges and changes the expansion will bring. David D'Angelo of Yacht Club Games featured some of the differences between playing as Shovel Knight and Plague Knight on Gamma Sutra. The major differences are that Plague Knight depends heavily on explosions and is a scientist who crafts items with his alchemy. He also is wild, maniacal, and dangerous, and their goal when developing him was to make it feel like you're controlling the character you saw in the original boss fight. With all this in mind, Yacht Club started working on his moveset, which Burst is at the core of. Burst is used by holding the attack button, which charges it, requiring some forward thinking and precision to get it right. The move results in larger reaching horizontal jump than Shovel Knight could manage. Once a horizontal burst is detonated, the player's left and right input does very little to change it. This captures Plague Knight's wild spirit, the seemingly out of control jumping in his boss fight, D'Angelo explained. The Yacht Club made Plague Knight's running speed slower and jump height lower in an effort to make burst feel more wild. However, to ensure he can reach similar heights as Shovel Knight, Plague Knight has double jump. The double jump can be used with Burst to reach far platforms. Quote, when combined with Burst jumps, players can move more accurately, or can more accurately adjust where and how to land. Or they can take advantage of Burst momentum to keep their faster momentum. End quote, D'Angelo wrote. As mentioned, Plague Knights loves explosives and he throws them instead of Shovel Knight shovels. He throws a series of three short-range bombs quickly, meaning he can attack from a distance, but the real difference is when bombs are thrown in the air. When he attacks in the air, the bombs are thrown at a 45-degree angle, allowing for platform clearance before landing. Throwing bombs in the air also slows down Plague Knight's movement. Quote, This was an important design for two regions, D'Angelo noted. First, it provides a consistent way to control Plague's airspeed since the bomb's burst speed and arc is fixed, giving the player the ability to stop themselves or slow down was very important. Second, it makes it much easier to be accurate with the bomb as an attack, as the player can lock onto the right place before unloading attacks on the same target. Without slowing down Plague, a lot of players would be sh showering an area with bombs rather than pinpointedly hitting their targets. End quote. Plague Knight's knockback distance after taking damage is also greater than Shovel Knight's. For example, he could easily fall into a pit after being hit by an enemy. You could avoid this, though, with double jump. Those are all the major differences between the two knights, though it was noted that Plague Knight will also further differ himself as you upgrade him and unlock armor. That's all for now, but I'm sure we'll be hearing more soon. Randall is an upcoming PlayStation Vita game brought to you by the guys from We The Force Studios. 
Heavily influenced by Guacamele, Randall is set in a dystopian world that doesn't seem like a departure from our own future. Society is content living under the constant surveillance and absolute power of a malicious dictator. In this police state, players take on the role of Randall, a powerful telepath with a touch of schizophrenia. His abilities allow him to control and play as every single character on screen, seamlessly swapping between them <clears throat> and exploiting every power that they have. I <laughs> was able to get my hands on the title during my time at PAX, so I'll be updating the, my impressions soon, so look out for that. As for Randall's release date, we're looking at sometime in 2016. Square Enix has announced that they're shutting down Dead Man's Cross on Vita. Desmond Cross only released this past February on PlayStation Vita, but that's, that isn't stopping Square Enix from giving it the axe. That's right, due to shutdown on September 30th, Dead Man's Cross for Vita will soon be no more. But there's a sliver of good news that there if you play on the smartphone too. Smartphone gamers will continue to be able to play Dead Man's Cross, and you can even transfer your Vita game data over via a new data transfer button on the info screen. It'll ask you for a password, which you then use alongside your player name on iOS or Android, to recover your game data. Oh, and word to the wise, Dead Man's coins don't transfer, so be sure to use them before you transfer your data over if you want them to count. Users eligible for the data transfer must have played the game before July 30th, but you'll get 10 Elite Hunt permits and 10 Energy Drinks when you migrate to the smartphone version. Either way, though, you've only got just a, over three weeks left on the Vita version, so now might be the time for one last Dead Man's Cross gaming session if you've been procrastinating it. <clears throat> Next up, in the most recent update for Atelier Sophie, Gust have revealed have introduced even more new characters as well as introducing a new feature known as Group Requests as revealed in a recent issue of Dengeki PlayStation. First up is group requests. These are offered to you by NPCs in the game main in the game's main town, and they offer greater rewards than normal quests by making you do a series of quests in a single area. Completing group requests earns the player vouchers, which can be spent on various different items throughout the game, including an item known as a date ticket. Next up is the newest additions to the game's cast, which include three characters this week, starting off with Mechlet. This kind of is repetitive from my last story I read, so. Apologies. A young boy who appears before Sophia at every opportunity he gets and is often seen, seen traveling around with Atomina. His intentions are unknown, but he does have an interest in alchemy. Speaking of Atomina, she is very much the female version of Mechlet, but she has more of a quiet... This is like exactly the same of what I just read. I'll just skip that part. The third and final addition to the character roster for this week is Tess Hetzman, an 18-year-old girl who works at the cafe. As the poster girl for the cafe, she only works specific days of the week. As the eld eldest child in her family, all of her other siblings are brothers, and while she may have a cheerful personality, she doesn't let this take over her dedication to her work. Her cheerful personality can also cause her to be quite the troublemaker and can often cause her to do things without thinking about the consequences. Taylor Sophie, The Alchemist of the Mysterious Book, was initially due for a September release, but was recently delayed until November 19th, so the game could be polished some more, but be sure to stay tuned for further updates leading up to the game's launch. Alright, moving on. The completion of upcoming Genkai Toki series title, Moero Crystal, might not be the end of the play, especially if you're addicted to the game's naughty scratch feature. It has been revealed by this week's Dengeki PlayStation that Moero Crystal has a post-game mode that pits you with completing scratch mode with a hundred different girls as fast as you can. They advise that you train your hands and fingers if you want to be quick, but I think that's a little lewd. Anyway, Moero Crystal is due in Japan on September 25th. And now for a really long one. New information about Yorunai Kuni's battle system, alongside various characters from the game, have been showcased in a new preview for the game courtesy of Dengeki Online. The game is set in a world where people have their nights stolen from them by monsters so that they are unable to sleep. Yorunai Kuni's story focuses on a girl named Arnis, who fights to save her friend Leoritis, who sacrificed herself to seal away the ruler of the night. Arnis can be or can command an army of monsters known as Serban to battle alongside her. 
as well as being able to transform herself and her weapon when battling the monsters that feature in the game. Servant come in many different types, and they all have their own style of fighting. Bonded by a blend contract, they will be, it will be critical that you learn how they differ, and then raise them so that you can have them fight alongside you in battle. When you are in battle, you can use a Servant Burst command that uses your SP and can have a range of effects from healing members of your party to dishing out the damage, dependent on the type of Servant. As you level up your new Servant, you will notice that they go through various changes. Not only will they level up, but they will change in appearance, color, and can even multiply in number. You can also add Servant to the top of your tra Transform and Weapon Change abilities to unlock more ways of defeating monsters as you make your way through the game. You will need to manage the weapon change ability as it's important that you change this depending on the enemy's status. By changing your weapon you can affect your servant's abilities which will have a knock-on effect on the battle allowing for even more possibilities. The transformation ability is particularly useful when doing battle with a tough enemy. By using it you will give your servant extra abilities to allow for you to get the upper hand in battle. So in order to succeed, you will need to do battle with the game's demons using the weapon change and transformation features, whilst also taking into account how much abilities will affect your servant so you can set up your squad to maximize your potential attack force. Anywho. There's also Nightwalkers, an attack type servant. The Nightwalker dives at its prey, attacking them with sharp claws. The Toy Troop. The Toy Troop is a copy type servant especially skilled at attacking enemies in the air and getting stronger as its numbers increase. Next up we look at changing form by the wielder sure will, weapon change. Using your weapons is key in your own Naikuni. Not only will you change Arnis' fighting dependent on your battle ahead, but you must also be aware of how each weapon forms special features and how they will affect your servant. First up we have the sword, the trusty sword, although the mo most basic of all the game's weapons, the sword has a balanced speed making it extremely easy to wield. Then there's the gun. With an incredibly fast rate of fire, the gun allows for you to stop an enemy dead in its tracks so you can get up close and continue with the onslaught. With the gun being a rage weapon, you will be able to attack from a distance while your servant stands in front of you to protect you. There's also the warhammer. Although slow when compared to other weapons, the Warhammer is especially strong and effective when you find yourself surrounded by many enemies. It also has a special ability whereby each blow from you or your servant has a chance to knock your enemy temporarily unconscious. There's the Short Sword. The Short Sword has a blood hit effect that allows for both you and your servant to gradually steal HP from your enemies. On top of this, it also allows for you to slide under an enemy's attack. And the longsword. The main appeal of the longsword is its reach. Even weak attacks have a wide swing that can take out enemies from the front and also from the side. When you have the longsword equipped, your servant will go into offensive mode, a type of berserk mode where they can repeatedly attack the enemy with strong attacks, not stopping until they are dead. And Blood Awakening Transform. Arnis will be able to wake her ghost form by using the half ghost blood that flows through her. When this is combined with her servant, she can assume various forms, each having her own abilities that can unleash powerful attacks on her enemies. When you're on the servant selection screen, you will notice that each servant has an icon in the bottom left that will show you what form you can transfer into alongside some colored marks. Once you have acquired the necessary amount of marks, you will then unlock that form for use in the game. The one thing you won't be able to do is transform at any given time. When you are in battle, you will need to transform gauge by or need to fill a transform gauge by making chain attacks. The higher the chain, the faster that the gauge will fill, unlocking the ability to transform. The form that you can take on will depend on which servant you use, and once you are transformed, you can give your servant special abilities. There's the demon form, you can attack with the power of fire whilst also boosting that servant's attack. The rabbit form, while Arnis may look cute in this form, do not let its looks deceive you. She is incredibly fast and tough when in rabbit form, and her servant will also benefit from a speed boost. The phantom form, 
a great form for dealing both healing both SP and HP. The Phantom form will also speed up your Servant's SP healing speed, as well as letting you use your Servant Burst without any limits. The Armor form. This form specializes in defense, and not only will it make you tougher, but it also raises the defense of your Servant. And the Nightmare form. This form is a special form amongst the others that can be used only once certain criteria have been met. The Nightmare form is extremely intimidating, with big black wings and armor in addition to attack, power, and range, er, range and speed boosts, while also allowing for you and your servant to ignore enemy attacks. Next up, we have information on pure blood battles. With the almighty task of finding a wide variety of monsters, Arnest will find that eventually she will come across enemies that are pure bloods. These enemies are ghosts that are or unable to let go of their desires, testing the limits of Arnest's powers. Christophoros, possessing the ability to attack sound waves, or er, attack using sound waves from the instrument that she wields, Christophoros has been an ally of Arnest in the past, begging the question of why they are fighting. There's also Mistral, attacking with her folding fan and constantly toying with you whilst you fight. Mistral also has a device that spits out monsters that attack you, not stopping until destroyed. We also have information on supporting characters. As you progress through the game, Arnest will meet other characters that have been affected by the ruler of the night. Each of these characters possess their own wishes and dreams that will really test Arnest's determination and will to protect Leoratus. The characters that you meet won't necessarily be human, with some being ghosts and others that are affected by the blue blood. First up is Leoratus, a kind-hearted girl who's destined to seal away the ruler of the night and who Arnest so desperately wants to save. Her unwavering faith is a constant sore point for Arnest. There's also Simon, a former knight who speaks to Arnest in Frank about his past so that she doesn't make the same mistakes. There's Lloyd, a merchant who leverages his connections and gives Arnest helpful information, but also hides a secret. Professor Arocado, he possesses a black book that supposedly contains information on how to seal away the night. Could this book contain the information Arnest is looking for? Christophoros, unable to let go of her long-lost teacher, Christophoros is an antagonist towards Arnest. What happened between them in their past? Mistral, hidden away in a palace, Mistral has taken a special interest in half-blooded Arnest and tempts her with becoming a full-blooded ghost. And Corinne, a holy knight who's wrapped up in similar circumstances to Arnest, Corinne gives her helpful advice about the blue blood. Your owner Naikuni is due to release in Japan next week on September 17th. Alright, next up, finally. <laughs> We recently brought you news of Hatsune Miku, Project Diva X coming to the Vita, and now we have some news on what the game will feature. In this week's Famitsu Magazine, three new modes were revealed for the music game. First up is Live Quest Mode, which will let you choose quests from five different areas where Miku and the others level up by clearing the stages. To do this, we will have to fill up a certain amount of voltage in their respective stages. The Diva Room will also return from past titles in Live Quest Mode, and as you progress through quests, you see events that have conversation between characters in it. The next mode is Rush Notes. During a stage, you'll see Rush appear on the screen, and that signals you to mash the corresponding button repeatedly for a higher score. The last mode revealed is Module Drop. Modules were previously costumes that you would get by acquiring Diva points in previous iterations of the series. However, you will get them randomly now, with quests giving you a higher chance of dropping certain ones, officially called Chance Time. We also have some news on what some of these modules will be, along with some of the tracks, all courtesy of Silicon Era. The first track is Renai Saibon by 40MP and features the Judgment module. The next track is Raspberry Monster by Honeyworks and features the Raspberryism module. And the last track given is Strangers by Heaven ZP and features the Silent Voice module. Hatsune Miku Project Diva X releases in Japan this March. Alright, time to get into some release date announcements. 
Uh, first up, Fu Ryu has announced the release date for their upcoming anime source title, Hamato Umaru Chan Umaru Training Plan. A visual novel adventure game with virtual pet simulation style gameplay thrown in. Umaru Training Plan was previously announced for release this winter in Japan, but now we can get a little more specific. Umato, um, I already said the name. Umaru Training Plan is due out on December 3rd and will come in both standard and limited editions. The limited edition version of the game is set to come with a special art booklet featuring, featuring illustrations by series creator Sun Kaku Head, a drama CD, a bath poster, DLC for an original idol costume, four alternate, alternate pieces of cover art, and some special edition packaging. Pre-orders included... Or include a DLC for another original costume called Swimsuit Santa, so get to pre-ordering if this one sounds like it's for you. The en enhanced edition of Tokyo Twilight Ghost Hunters has been dated for release in the land of the rising sun, coming to Vita Gamers with a revamped battle system and newly written episodes surrounding some of the key characters. Daybreak Special Gigs has been dated for Japan, hitting the region on November 26th. Not much else has been revealed yet, but you can be sure that when it does, we'll be letting you know. Compile Heart has announced a delay for Death Hunter or Death Under the Labyrinth. The upcoming PlayStation Vita Dungeon RPG will be pushed back from its October 8th release date until December 17th. Compile Heart mentions several reasons for the delay of the game, although fur further details were not confirmed at this time. All right, the home stretch, guys. Dengeki Bunko Fighting Climax Ignition, the update of the 2D fighter Dengeki Bunko Fighting Climax, was released in Japanese arcades this past July, and now Sega has revealed that it will be heading to Sony platforms later this year. The game will release on PlayStation Vita, PlayStation 3, and PlayStation 4 on December 17th in Japan. The arcade version of the game included new characters Kenzer Barbotage from Heavy Object and Emi Yusa from The Devil is a Part-Timer, as well as new systems and balance updates for different characters. Ignition will include the popular Dream Duel story mode from the original game, accompanied by new character situations. A network mode will also be included, as well as a training mode so you can master your skills to become the ultimate fighter, and a gallery mode where you can view various in-game illustrations. It was also revealed that first print bonuses of the game will include a download code for an original custom theme, so get on that if you're interested. Although, the other one hasn't even released here yet. Anywho, <laughs> moving on. It's time to strap on your helmets and get ready to hit the jumps as Pump BMX Plus is about to make its debut on PlayStation Vita. It was first announced back in June, but now Curve Digital has given us an exact date as to when we can perform some killer tail whips and 360s on our Vitas. The good news is that it's right around the corner. Pump BMX Plus will be available as a cross by title with the PlayStation Vita, PlayStation 4, and PlayStation 3 starting on September 22nd. The game features a full licensed soundtrack, leaderboards, beautiful animations, and over 500 challenges to keep you busy and keep you coming back for more. The bikes are authentic, the gear is authentic, the tricks are authentic, and grinding out backflips on top of a glacier is authentic. Well, at least the bikes and tricks are spot on. There's no word on pricing, but we will have to wait long to find out. And the last P to P. Piece of news. The speaking is getting to me. Sound it out. <laughs> Axis Games' Twitter account made release date announcements for two of their upcoming Atome visual novels, Code Realized, Guardian of Rebirth, and Nor 9 Var Commons. Two Atome Idea Factory source Atome titles that have been announced as making their way to North America via Axis Games' localization have been given release dates via everyone's, okay, maybe only my, Favorite social media site, Twitter. Here's the announcement for Code Realized Guardians of Rebirth. Quote, Date 1. Code Realized will be out in the wild and ready to be played by you on October 20th, 2015. End quote. And the announcement for Nor 9 Var Commons? Quote, Date 2. Nor 9 will be emerging from its alcove to become Miss Personality on November 3rd, 2015. End quote. So there we have it, folks. Two Atoma games in a two-week span and less than two months from now. Are you excited? 
I'll give them a try if I get the chance. After all, Amnesia Memories is the Natomi title from Idea Factory and is more than competent in both Liam's and my opinions. Anyhow, that's the news. Whee! Yes, we indeed. Well, all right. <laughs> Let's get into that talking point, Kyle. What is it? All right. Well, as usual, Tyler, it's announced release games we're looking forward to from the week. So what looks good, Tyler? All right. <clears throat> Steins Gate. Of course, the new one. I really want to play the first one, and I still have not got my copy yet because of <laughs> the delay on the special edition that I pre-ordered. So eventually I'll get it, and then I'll see if I actually am excited for the new, the next one which hopefully I will be. Um, also, I played Randall, so I kind of know what to expect, and if you're a big fan of Guacamelee, then I f have a feeling you're going to love Randall. It's definitely challenging, and it's very interesting and unique, even though it still has like clear inspiration from Guacamelee. So definitely keep your eyes out on that one, as I am. Um... Also, what else we got here? That pumped BMX game, that looks pretty interesting. It reminds me of Ali Ali, and I really enjoyed Ali Ali, so I'm all for that. Um, what else is here? Uh, Tokyo Xanadu, of course. I really want that to be announced to come west, but you never know. <laughs> uh, so yeah, other than that, all the usual stuff I'm excited for. What about you, Kyle? Well, um, I'm going to have to agree with you on Tokyo Xanadu, and I'm going to throw in there Euro and Unai Kuni as well. Both of those need to be localized. Um, and, of course, that Hatsune Miku Project Eva X game, too. So all three of those sound good, but they need to come over first. <laughs> um, Randall, um, you told me about it. I read a bit about it. And, yeah, I'm interested. I'll, I'll be down to play that when that comes out. So count me intrigued. Um... <laughs> Also, Drive, 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 that game looks really weird and interesting, so I'm going to have to give it a play um, when it comes out. So that, that'll be a little whale off, but um, yeah, I'm down for that. Um, also, what else? There's something else here. Maybe. <laughs> Possibly. Oh, Dengeki Bunko Fighting Climax, I'm waiting for the one to come out over here, and then we'll judge whether I want that second one or not. Um, and those two Otome games, I'll play those, so I, I'm down for those, I guess. And Pump BMX Plus, uh, you said it looks like Oli Oli. I think it looks like Oli Oli mixed with Urban Trial Freestyle, which is perfect because I pretty much always played Urban Trial Freestyle. I was like, why can't I do proper tricks? So, <laughs> yeah, that, that works for me. Um, yeah, so all those. Lots of stuff. Oh, yeah. Lots and lots <laughs> you, you of stuff. You know the drill. <laughs> yeah, just continually adding to our backlog of craziness. Pretty much. It's wonderful, he says with a sarcastic voice. <laughs> but also a serious, because it is nice. <laughs> it's a good problem, Tyler. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. Let's jump into the listener mail here. We've only got one, but there's multiple questions from this one person. So, Well, there's actually two there now, Tyler. Well, let me hit the refresh button. God <laughs> damn it! <laughs> well, look, yep, there sure is. All right, well, would you like me to take the first one? And, or go would ahead. You wanna, huh? Okay. No, go ahead. <laughs> all right, here we go. First one we got. Hello, smiley face. You guys do a great job with the podcast and keep up the great work. My questions are the following. First up, how do you feel about Tearaway Unfolded coming to PlayStation 4 this week, and if you played it, does it feel as great as it did on Vita? I asked this due to how the original was built for the ground up for the Vita platform, so I'm interested in seeing your thoughts on the PlayStation 4 version. I don't own a PS4. Kyle, let's just jump into that one right away. What? what, what eh, I already know your thoughts, but just <laughs> lay, lay them out. <laughs> Yeah, my thoughts are that it shouldn't have been pulled off the Vita. It was a made-for-Vita game. It was one of the exclusives. And it, in my opinion, it's a bad decision to fucking bring it to PS4, and I'm a little salty. <laughs> so, yeah, um, not interested, won't be buying it, unless it's, like, ridiculously cheap. Like, I'm talking less than five bucks um, on sale. And yeah, I'm just really not interested. And it, it kind of leaves a sour taste in my mouth that they 
that they ruined one of our exclusives. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it it's a little sucky for sure because obviously it is a business and whatnot, but how much they hyped how Tearaway was for the Vita and how it uses all its features and it can only be done on the Vita. And then <laughs> here we are getting a PS4 version. It's like, what? Yeah, you guys are just completely lying to us. So, I mean, I'm sure it's going to be fun for people that didn't play it on the Vita and it's going to be all this craziness and people are going to talk about it, but its real home is the Vita. And if uh, if you played it on the Vita, I think you're good to go. I don't really see a reason for me, personally, to jump into it again. I enjoyed it my first time, and I know it's going to happen, so why would I want to <laughs> do it again? <laughs> you know what? I actually just had a thought. What's up? You, you know what would have completely almost eased my saltiness of this game coming to PS4? What's that? If there was like a special feature where if you had a Vita, you could link your Vita to the PlayStation 4 and use the Vita as the controller and play the game like it was actually meant to be played when you're doing paper craft stuff. That'd be interesting. Now that I would play. <laughs> well, all right, but they didn't, so you're not gonna. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, all right. Yeah. But Kyle and I are both a little salty on that that topic right there. So, yeah, that's our thoughts. Next question he has is, which PlayStation Plus game for September are you guys enjoying the most? Super Time Force, La Mulana, and Exo Drifter are all great additions to the Vita library, and I'm wondering which one you guys are likely liking the most, Kyle. Well, unfortunately, I haven't played any of them. <laughs> <laughs> I've tagged all three of those games. Um, I've actually downloaded Super Time Force, but I have not had time to play any of those. I've been busy with editing and writing and all the other fun stuff, getting this new laptop set up, all the, all the details that, uh, yeah, I needed to get done. <laughs> um, but as far as which one I think I'm going to enjoy, that one's easy. Super Time Force Ultra um, easily looks the best to me, and it's the one that I have downloaded, so it's the one I'm most excited to play. So there you go. Unless it's completely broken, which I haven't heard anything, I think I'll be good. I heard there's a game breaking bug. Well, there's a game breaking bug, bug, but the game isn't broken to pl like you can start playing it and like it works. You know right, I mean? right. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. We're both gonna be kind of lame on this answer because <laughs> I have only downloaded Super Time Force and I have actually played it. <laughs> And I well, really at, least, at, at least you're better than me. You, you've played the game. <laughs> yeah. La Mulana and... Is it Zeo Drifter or is it Exo Drifter? Zeo Drifter, I believe. Okay, Zeo Drifter. Yeah, both games just don't look too exciting to me. So I didn't even tag them. I don't care about them. <laughs> like, I really don't. <laughs> so, uh, actually, I think I already have La Mulana. I think I got a review copy and I never even did anything with it. But anyways, that's another, <laughs> nice. that's another nice. story. <laughs> But yeah, Super Time Force, that's where it's at. Um, next question he's got here, and the last question is, which PlayStation Vita games are you looking forward to playing this fall? And he ends it with, thank you for your time and have a great day. Smiley face, and that was from RK128 on the forums and NeoGAF. So Kyle, what games are you looking forward to playing this fall? Um. Okay, stuff that's not out that I'm looking forward to playing. Um... Hmm. Well, that Poncho game looks interesting. I'm not sure exactly when it's coming out, but it's supposed to be imminent. Um, they were saying, I think, September, but there was no lockdown date, so that one. Um, Corpse Party Blood Drive, that one definitely looks interesting to me. I'll be keeping my eye on that, although I don't know what I'm going to do. I might play or watch like a Let's Play of the, the earlier games or something. Like i got to get caught up. I hate jumping into the story at the end or whatever the hell. Yeah. Um, so that. Um, Super Beat Zonic. That game looks pretty awesome for a rhythm game um, that isn't, you know, stylized like a Hatsune Miku game. I like those kind of stylized ones more, but yeah, Super Beat Zonic has grown on me. Um, so that. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel is supposed to come this fall. Um, I'm interested in that for sure. And yeah, I'll, I'll be picking it up. 
<laughs> um, what else? Code Realized, Guardian of Rebirth, and uh, Nord 9, Bar Commons. Both of those look good to me, so I'll be keeping my eye on those as well. Um, what else do we have? A couple more things. Oh, um, Sorted on Lines in this fall, technically. November 13th and 17th, I believe. So that for sure. <laughs> um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Uh, I can't really think of anything else, Tyler. I think Valkyrie Drive Bikuni might be in there. What somewhere. about uh, that Dengenki Bunko Fighting Climax? Oh, yeah, that too. Dengenki Bunko Fighting Climax. Thanks for reminding me. No problem. <laughs> but yeah, I, th I think that's it, or close to it anyway. Not <laughs> what too about bad. you, Tyler? Well, you named a lot of what I was going to say, so I'll just <laughs> go through it real quick. Uh, Corpse Party, Blood Drive, yes, I'm really excited for that. The Legend of Heroes, Trails of Cold Steel. Oh yeah, I've already got Last Song. Um, I got I imported the Asian version, but I most likely will be picking up the American version, just in case there's tons of DLC that comes out, and that's the only way I can get it. So, <laughs> um, also, um, Persona Four Dancing All Night. I am super excited for that. I've got like the eighty dollar Disco Fever edition pre-ordered, and I got the rolled eyes from the girlfriend when she saw how much it was. <laughs> so, on top of the new Vita that I'll be getting, and uh, if I showed her every game that I'm going to be getting towards the end of this year, she'd probably just slap me or something. That's okay. Let me do some math. Here. All right, let's let's. You know what you need to do, Tyler? What's up? You need you need to tell her. Listen, at least I'm gaming on Vita. Vita games max out at like forty bucks. If I was That's gaming true. on PS4, it would be like sixty bucks. That's very true. Or more for special editions. That's very true. Yeah. Well, all right. Let's do some math here, real quick. So I'm getting the new, the blue Vita. So that's two hundred dollars. Yep. I'm getting the Persona Four Special Edition. That's eighty bucks. <laughs> I'm getting Corpse Party, which is basically fifty dollars. It's forty nine ninety nine. Um, I'm also getting. I don't know if we'll be getting a review copy. Do you think we'll get a review copy of Legend of Heroes? Uh, that's XC, right? Yeah, XC. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we'll get a review copy of that. So I don't technically have to buy it, but I might buy it just because it's physical. <laughs> but anyways, I won't add that one yet. Um, and then all the other games I can't think of right now. Uh, what else am I getting? Uh, oh man, I can't think of it. But anyways, right there, that's three hundred and thirty dollars. That's just coming up in the next like two months. <sighs> yep, that's a lot of money. <laughs> and I'll probably spend more than that because I'm constantly buying stuff and there's other games here. Like, I don't know if I want it. I kind of do just because it has multiplayer and I'm wondering if you're going to get it, Kyle. And that is the Earth Defense Force 2 game. Meh. Not, not a fan of it? Not really. See, I didn't play the the one that first came out on the Vita, but... I'm looking at the screenshots and seeing that it's online multiplayer. I'm like, oh, man. Kyle, come on. <laughs> I don't know, man. Maybe if you're getting it. <laughs> See, that's the thing. It's kind of like, if you're getting it, I'll get it for sure. I mean, it has online cooperative play, new playable class, four-player online co-op. Ah. There's jetpacks, Kyle. There's vehicles. Jetpacks, though. There's jetpacks, vehicles. Come on. Think about it. I'm thinking. <laughs> well, anyways, yeah. Quite a bit of stuff coming out that I'm excited for. So thank you, RK128, for your questions. And, Kyle, what's the last question we got here? All right, our last question is from Mr. Alzvita on the forum, and he asks... When is the release date for Earth Defense Force 2, September 22nd, or in October? What do you think, Tyler? Well, I'm, I actually am looking at that thing right now because we just talked about it. Uh, Amazon is saying Octo October 20th. I don't know if that's the actual... I think Amazon's wrong there. Really? Yep, I'm pretty sure it's October 6th. Hmm. Well, it's one of those... It's October! <laughs> yeah, it's October. It's not September 22nd. I don't know where that date came from. Yeah, well, there you go. October, you get to squish some bugs with guns or be squished by bugs with no guns. That's how it works, right? 
Sure. I've never played an Earth Defense game, so I really don't know. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for your question. That's all we got, right, Kyle? Absolutely. Well, we would do guess that game, but obviously Liam is not here, so we're going to go to check this out, and it's my turn this time. And there's a big sale going on right now. It's not super big, but there's a sale. It's the 20th anniversary sale. Quite a lot of games out there to check out. And some really good Vita titles that are basically half off if you have uh, PlayStation Plus. So definitely check them out. Um, I'm actually contemplating picking up the Ratchet and Clank, Clank collection because I've been wanting it. And it's only $15 right now from its original 30 bucks. So very, very tempting. Although I still haven't finished the Sly Cooper collection. So that's the only thing that's stopping me. But then Kyle made a great point that then I'd I'd have it, and I could play it whenever I wanted. So, damn you, Kyle. But anyways, my logic makes you crazy, doesn't it, Tyler? It does. <laughs> well, all right, yeah, that's my check it out. I think Kyle would agree. There's some great games in there. Indeed. So get on it, check it out. Let us know what you picked up. So we don't have any threads to check out, do we, Kyle? Unless you updated it again, and I need to refresh. We don't, although I want to point out that the community top 10 Vita games in the PlayStation Vita games section um, could use your attention if you haven't got there. We want to hear your top 10 games for inclusion in a future edition of our magazine, so get on it. Well, all right, there you go. Let's get on out of here. If you've got listener mail or comments, contact us via, via I always want to say Vita, via media services at thevitalounge.net. You can find everything we talked about on thevitalounge.net, the news, the reviews, featured articles, store updates, the podcast, a community forum, and a magazine, both digital and physical. You can support the site and get physical copies of the magazine via patreon.com slash thevitalounge. We're on Twitter. Just look up at the Vita Lounge. I'm at Mr. PS Vita Reviews. Kyle is at Teflon Tactics. We're also on Facebook. Just search the Vita Lounge. We also have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash loungeplay. We post up the podcast. We post up previews for upcoming releases for each month on the Vita. And we also just posted up Kyle hating Minecraft. Yes, we did. And tro- trolling my little house we were trying to build. Kyle. We gotta Best live. Part. We have to survive. Best part, Tyler. Best part. <laughs> I will not go find you in a zombie apocalypse because you'll just destroy everything and let the zombies in. Tyler, I'll be the only one alive when the zombie apocalypse happens. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I'll probably have started it. Come on. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right. Anyways, this podcast is also available on iTunes, the Podbean. I don't know why I said the. It's on Podbean, Stitcher, YouTube, and via direct download on the site. So. Go grab it on whatever platform you choose. Subscribe to us and rate us and let us know how we are doing. That's it. That's the VitaCast episode 92. We're out of here, Kyle. Vita for life.